friends. Um, so on my heart this week has been sort of the conflicting, seemingly conflicting needs of um, rest and exhaustion and um, justice and effort. And uh, so I thought I'd share some words with you on that. And um, maybe these puzzlings and self-discoveries uh, might shed some light on your own. May it be so. Is it possible to both care for self and stand up for justice? To both rest and activate? To both be deeply at peace and troubled by the state of the world? To answer your calling and to be still? I think so. I have to believe it. While I believe it is an elusive space, I am also convinced that the two seemingly paradoxes are actually deeply intertwined. And each of us has our unique space in them that may or may not be recognized from the outside. Because the outside isn't the point. The reaction, recognition, appreciation may or may not happen. But it isn't what answering your call is about. I believe the work I am to do in the world begins inside me and yours in you. It is fine-tuning my hearing to the source of all good, love, and peace. It is transforming my vision that I may see truth. It is growing my heart that it might hold all the sorrow and gladness I witness. It is calming my anxieties and incessant busyness and doingness that sometimes is just fabricated things to be done that I might feel a sense of accomplishment or value. A frantic feeling, scrambling to justify my existence. Shh. Peace. Be still. None of the things I seek actually come from outside. Peace, worth, value, confidence that I'm doing good and being good, that I matter, kindness, hope, gentleness, a sense of justice. They can be practiced externally, but mostly they require an inward look, an inward nourishment and attentiveness before I can effectively apply them outside myself. So I'm tuning in. Because the only voice that matters is God's voice. And that voice, the voice of the universe, the voice of the source of all goodness, love, and peace, the voice of spirit, that voice will never steer me wrong. So the more I can learn to recognize that voice, the more I can be who I am to be for myself, my family, and my world. Here's what I'm learning. God's voice doesn't sound frantic or anxious. God's voice doesn't shame me. God's voice does not tell me it's not enough or that I'm inadequate or if I just did this or that or said this or that or worked harder or gave more or sacrificed myself in some way, then I'd be worthy. God's voice is not coercive or manipulative. It doesn't make me feel bad for who I am or what I believe or who I love or how I live. God's voice does sound like love like gentleness, like it's going to be okay and I'm going to be okay. God's voice says things like, give what you have today and I'll do the rest. You are good and you've done good. I love you no matter what. No matter what happens, I'm going to use that for your good. You are safe. It's not all on you. Come here, baby girl. Let me hold you. I'm so proud of how far you've come, and I can see all the amazing places you're headed. You got this, and I got you. Perhaps as I say that you, like me, are prone to hearing the yeah buts. Yeah, but it's not that easy. Yeah, but you can't just do nothing. Yeah, but you have to work hard. Anything worth having is worth fighting for. Bootstraps, give all you got. Pain is beauty. Productivity and efficiency are valuable. Work hard, play hard, earn it, and all the rest. 
And there's nothing inherently wrong with these statements. If these are the rules you want to live by, you are free to do so. But know you have a choice. Whatever your yeah but voice says, you still get a choice. Whatever the world says, you still get a choice. You still get to decide what voice guides you. And if the one you prefer seems too quiet to you, take some time to tune in and listen, to practice listening to it without distraction. You'll get better at hearing it. And as a clarification, accepting unconditional love, gentleness, and even rest is not the same as being passive and slothful she must remind herself often. But the things that light me up, that make me feel most alive, that are my role in bringing justice, that make me feel the good kind of tired, these are the things I'm meant to do. These things fill my cup and allow space for nourishment and rest too if I let them. Every moment does not have to be used to the fullest, drained of its marrow, for me to fulfill my calling in this life. I now believe filling all available space would prevent me from fulfilling my calling. There must be space to reflect, listen, learn, grow, be inspired. We need the space to stop and admire the artwork of our life and to share it with others. Hold the space for the hug, the done good, the breath, the appreciate and enjoy the fruits of your labor. I believe in a God that doesn't want you to be depleted, even for a good cause. Take care of yourself. Do what is yours to do. You know what it is. And know that you can do no more. Any added efforts will be useless flailing. And if you don't know what it is, Stop and listen a while. Do the things that help you tune in. Rest and be grateful for what you have accomplished. Listen for the voice that says, you done good, kid. I love you. You're enough. For surely that is the voice of love, the voice of truth, the voice of God. I know a lot of us are struggling with the times that we're living in with who we are to be in this world of distancing and virus and racial injustice and political unrest and all the rest. Listen for the voice, the voice of truth. I have faith that if we each can do that and quell our anxieties and fears, we'll be in a better place. Grace and peace, my friends. Go into the world and do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with God.